When you look around in here, you can almost picture the ladies of the 1870s in their long white skirts and children in sailor collars and short pants. This is Day's Ice Cream, and it's the oldest continually operating business in Ocean Grove, New Jersey. It opened in August 1876 on the very spot where it still stands today, 48 Pittman Avenue. Back then, Ocean Grove was seven years young and operated as a Methodist camp meeting site. In fact, nothing but sand dunes and pines stretched from days to the ocean. Even the landmark Great Auditorium wouldn't be built for another 18 years. Days was brought to Ocean Grove by two brothers from New Providence, New Jersey, Wilbur Fisk Day and Pennington Mulford Day. They already had a successful shop in Morristown, New Jersey, known as W.F. Day and Brother, caterers, confectioners, and ice cream dealers, which opened in 1862. There was also a location in Mount Tabor, New Jersey, another camp meeting site. The Day's location was referred to as Day's Ice Cream Garden, and it's unique in that it was designed to take full advantage of those soothing summer breezes. The wall in front of me is completely open, like a porch. Down the center, we have a roofless court with a carpet of plants and flowers. And to my right, this wall is lined with windows that actually overlook a garden. This image is from an old stereo view card. It shows the interior of the Ocean Grove location in 1882. Notice how elaborate the gingerbread trim was in those early years. Here's an old postcard showing an image of the Ocean Grove location from about 1900. The Day brothers made ice cream and candy right on the premises in what they called the factory. This photo shows what it probably looked like at the turn of the 20th century. At the Historical Society of Ocean Grove, we actually have Pennington Day's ice cream scoop. It was donated by his grandson. It's really substantial. You might be surprised. We also have an original parfait glass from Days. Now, there's no date attached to this, but it really is that quintessential Victorian ice cream parlor dish. And if you think that's cool, look at this. We have 33 pewter ice cream molds that were used at Days at the turn of the 20th century. These were manufactured by Shaw and Company of New York. They were the first company in America to make ice cream molds starting in 1854. Now these would have been considered single portion molds. One quart of ice cream would have filled about eight of these. On the outside, they don't look like much, but when you open them up, you see the amazing detail that would have appeared on the surface of the ice cream. Look at this beautiful oak leaf. One of the things I find so charming about the Victorian era is how they like to give a whimsical quality to ordinary objects. Think of how cool it must have been to walk into Days and buy ice cream in the shape of a banjo or a boat. But my favorite mold of all has to be the Buddhist monk. Or maybe it's meant to be Buddha himself. Look at the detail. But beautifully molded ice cream wasn't the only attraction at Days. A newspaper ad from about 1890 boasts of, I quote, celebrated cream peppermint candy, fresh little buttercups, rich coconut kisses, and new English walnut kisses, among other temptations. Speaking of sweets, around 1868, Wilbur Day employed an apprentice at his Morristown store, Milton Hershey. And it was at Day's that that young apprentice made his first batch of chocolates for retail sale. Now those candies were meant to be cooled and flattened on a marble slab, but Mr. Day didn't have a marble top table. So instead, they used the broken tombstone of Mr. Day's aunt, Sarah Brookfield Day. Now that's what I call dark chocolate. Milton Hershey eventually left Days to start his own candy company, and here's how that turned out. The Ocean Grove location of Days did so well those first two years, they opened another store in Asbury Park in 1878 and a Newark location in 1886. 
There was also a satellite shop inside the Ross Bathing Pavilion on the north end of Ocean Grove Beach. Here's a postcard image of the Asbury Park store from about 1910. It was at 291 Asbury Avenue, and it was built using the same floor plan as the Ocean Grove store. Here's the exterior of the Asbury Park store. Today, there's a grassy lot where days used to be. Speaking of Asbury Park, here's an interesting tidbit. Elizabeth Crane Day was Wilbur and Pennington Day's mother. She was related to Stephen Crane, who wrote The Red Badge of Courage in 1895. Stephen Crane's house in Asbury Park is open to the public for tours. Here's another good story about days in Asbury Park. In the late 1800s, on any given day at the height of summer, you might see a small boy standing in front of Days, enthusiastically eating ice cream and proclaiming that he was the champion cream eater of Asbury Park. The Day brothers paid him to stand there as a talking advertisement. They talked about taking the stunt a step further by outfitting the boy in a white duck suit, long coat, stovepipe hat, and cane, and having him walk up and down the boardwalk eating Days ice cream. But we're not sure if they actually went through with it. That little boy wasn't the only young person to work for days. 19th century ledger books from the Ocean Grove and Asbury Park stores show children of both Day brothers working alongside their parents. For example, in July of 1890, two of Wilbur's sons, Waters B. Day and Oliver K. Day, were paid monthly wages of $10 and $6, respectively. It's been rumored that entertainer and civil rights activist Paul Robeson worked at Days in Asbury Park, where he could be heard singing while he worked. That may have been a summer job for him while he attended Rutgers University around 1915. Robeson is probably best known for his role as Joe in the 1936 movie musical Showboat, in which he sang Old Man River. Time passed and so did the Day brothers. In fact, Wilbur was so beloved by his employees that they served as pallbearers at his funeral in 1913, and Mayor Todd of Morristown asked the town's businesses to draw their curtains during the funeral hour. The day's shops eventually closed, all but the Ocean Grove location, and it was Pennington Day's daughter Agnes who would keep it running through the 1940s. During her reign, Agnes added a tea room that served lunch and dinner six days a week as well as a gift shop. Agnes eventually sold Days, and beginning in 1950, she operated a rooming house at 38 Ocean Pathway, which she called the Pennington for her father. Agnes sold Days to Mr. and Mrs. Homer Secor. Homer had worked for the Days as a young man. The business changed hands a few more times, and today it's owned by Arnold Teixeira and David Fernicola, who also opened a location on the Asbury Park boardwalk in 2012. It's the first new Days to open up in 139 years. Watch part two of our history of days when I'll be talking with co-owner Arnold Teixeira.